Yeah, it's been a very successful day. Wish you a great day, everybody. Simon Levive, now the most wanted man on Tinder and maybe not in the way that you'd expect. Simon is a professional con man and fraudster who has conned an estimated $10 million out of his victims from across the world in a Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme is basically when someone lures investors but uses money from previous investors to induct new ones, basically creating this cyclical manner of wealth where he uses previous victims to pay for a new victim to become part of his trap. While the man has heartlessly scammed tons of innocent women out of hard earned money, leaving them in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, he is also a free man dating an Israeli model. Today we're covering the life of Simon Levive and seeing what he's up to now. Tomorrow though, you decide. Let us know in the comments down below who you think we should cover on the next episode of Where Are They Now? And please don't forget to like this video for more content just like it. Simon was born in a very poor part of Israel, in a slum outside of Tel Aviv. While not much is known about his early life, we do know that Simon was born into crime, as his father was a rabbi who had been accused of aiding Simon in defrauding another rabbi out of hundreds of thousands of shekels, amounting to about 400,000 US dollars. We also know that he was completely disowned by his mother, and when he was 15, he moved to New York with his family friends. Those family friends would later accuse him of misusing their credit card for $40,000, and they kicked him out of their house, so he went back to Israel. He's been committing minor frauds since he was a kid, starting out with check fraud, where basically one writes a check to illegally obtain money that isn't there. In 2011, Simon was charged with theft, forgery, and fraud for attempting to cash stolen checks in Israel. A year before that, he allegedly stole checkbooks from a family he was babysitting for, attempting to forge three checks, and from a household while working as a handyman. He was also charged with leaving a five-year-old baby unattended for a long period of time. Simon was found out, and then arrested and released on bail for about 3,000 American dollars without having ever served any time in jail. Later that same year, Simon officially fled Israel under a fake name and passport. In 2015, Simon was arrested again in Finland, this time for defrauding several women out of their money. He defrauded three women in the UK, Finland, and Bangkok of about $215,000. He was sentenced to three years in prison, and when he was arrested, he claimed to be a man born in 1978, and he also had two forged Israeli passports, three forged Israeli driver's licenses, two forged Israeli flight permits, and five forged American Express credit cards. He served served his three years in prison in Finland. Then once his sentence was over, he was supposed to be extradited back to Israel because he had an arrest warrant out there. But when Simon was dropped in Israel, he quickly went to work assuming a different identity, this time by changing his last name to Levive. Under this new name, he could pretend that he's related to Lev Levive. Lev Levive is a billionaire businessman involved in the diamond trade. He would use this surname to begin luring in his first victims through Tinder. After he changed his name, he fled the country again. In 2018, it is now our first confirmed time that Simon was back in Europe, and it was also when he began defrauding the women that are in the Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler. Simon met Cecile on Tinder in January, and by May, she would have him reported to the police. He would lure his victims by showering them in affection and lavish gifts. He would take them on private plane rides, party in exclusive clubs with them, all on his own dime. He would spend months with these women, convincing them that he was the son of a diamond mogul and billionaire. Eventually, though, he would that his unnamed enemies had attacked him, sending these women photos of him and his bodyguard badly hurt. He would then ask them to take out loans to send to him so he could reach safety. This is when he would take the money and begin recruiting new women by using his previous victim's cash to continue living the lavish lifestyle. From there, he would send out fake checks to the women he defrauded to placate them before ghosting or leaving completely. Once Cecile realized she had been defrauded, the police basically did nothing. She instead went to the press to try and dissuade Simon from being able to bankrupt any more victims. The news site published the article titled The Tinder Swindler in February, and by June 2019, he was arrested in Greece by Interpol for using a fake passport. He was extradited from Greece back to Israel to finally answer for his crimes. But it's not nearly the justice we would have hoped. Simon would only be charged with 15 months in prison and made to compensate his victims for around 40,000 US dollars, even though he reportedly stole millions of dollars. He didn't even serve the full 15 months 
months. Instead, he was released after only five for good behavior. Now, here we come up to post arrest. He is still wanted in several European countries, but hasn't gone back to them because in Israel, he's a free man. The reason why he's so free is because technically he didn't really commit a crime. Although he scammed these women, they knowingly and willingly took out their thousands of dollars worth of loans, even if it was under false pretenses. Simon didn't technically steal anything, even if he was lying about his safety to make these women think that he would be in real danger if they didn't give him their money. Now, at 31 years old, Simon had an active Instagram and Tinder account. He had almost 100,000 followers on Instagram where he posted his lavish and expensive lifestyle. But once the documentary was released, Tinder banned his account. Why they didn't ban it years before is beyond me. Then as the documentary gained tons of popularity, Simon deactivated his Instagram altogether with the final message of quote, thank you for all your support. I will share my side of the story in the next few days when I have sorted out the best and most respectful way to tell it both to the involved parties and myself. Until then, keep an open mind and heart. The women he swindled are still paying off their debts and likely will for years to come. In a statement made by Tinder, they said, quote, we have conducted internal investigations and can confirm Simon Levive is no longer active on Tinder under any of his known aliases. Even though when the documentary was released, he was still active. Now though, despite being banned from Tinder and taking down his Instagram, Simon does seem to have a new beau. His his new girlfriend named Kate Conlon is an Israeli model who has been seen traveling around with Levive in a Rolls Royce on his Instagram stories. Apparently, he had contacted her through Instagram in November 2020 and pursued her for four months before she agreed to meet him. According to Kate, quote, he did not hide anything from me. It was important to him that I know everything about him from the beginning. She also apparently is convinced that Simon is innocent with the statement, quote, the sums they said he strung were equal to the gifts he buys me on Saturday. It's absurd. Why should he take a girl for tens of thousands when he spends such a sum as a matter of routine? It doesn't make sense. She hasn't been quoted on how she felt about Simon being active on Tinder as early as 2022, but if his main source of income, his victims, is now gone, who knows how he's going to continue paying for his girlfriend's gifts. She also insists that he makes his money entirely legitimately through real estate and business consulting. She's bragged about how he's doing big business and property and how during his business consulting events, quote, Quote, no one gets up to use the bathroom because his advice on how to succeed is so interesting. Who knows, now that Simon's unable to utilize his previous methods of fraud, if he will continue to be able to live his lifestyle of theft and fraud. What do you think about Simon and how he's now just totally a free man? Let us know in the comments down below and please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content just like it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Where Are They Now? I've been your host Sierra, see you next time.